Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing how to automate emails using Google Apps Script that uh, take charts from Google Sheets. So uh, in this example you're going to want to have a workbook and you're going to want to have at least one chart. Uh, you can have more than one chart. We're going to learn how to do uh, one chart and then two charts and more charts and all that type of stuff. Uh, and once you have that set up, we're going to learn how to write a three file script that collects the charts from the Google Sheet, uh, then produces an HTML template so that you can send an email. So the end result is going to show you the basics of uh, taking charts from Google Sheets and then populating them into an email like this. So with that out of the way, open up a workbook. If you don't have one, pause the video and produce it. Uh, but you're going to want to have a data set in Google Sheets with a chart. Uh, the one caveat is that you cannot use a combo chart. So a combo chart is where you have uh, values on two accesses. Uh, I'm going to be recording a follow-up video that shows you how to build those. But for whatever reason, I don't know why, you cannot uh, use this method I'm going to show you with combo charts. So if you do need a solution for combo charts, check out my channel. I'm going to have a video up shortly after this one. So with that out of the way, uh, if you're in Sheets, go to the Extensions menu, open up App Script. So what we're going to begin with is going to be our script file for a custom function that we're going to build called Get Sheet by ID. Uh, you don't have to put this into a function. I think it's a wise decision. That way you can use it over and over again and uh, your code will be more readable and uh, yeah so what we're going to do is write the word function call it get sheet by id you can call it whatever you want to uh, this function is going to have a single argument and it's going to be a sheet id uh, so the way that i like to label that input is sheet underscore id and then we're going to have curly brackets so the first thing we're going to do is access the active workbook and we are going to declare a variable called wb, and that's going to call the spreadsheet app uh, method, followed by the get active spreadsheet method. After that, we are going to access all the sheets in the workbook. So we're going to put that into a var called sheets. We're going to call that workbook variable that we just created. And we're going to use the get sheets method. Next, we are going to loop through the sheets and we're going to use a for loop. So we're going to do for with a parentheses and then we're going to create an, a variable called i, uh, which I use as iterator. So we're going to say for i in sheets and then we're going to use curly brackets and we are going to set a conditional to evaluate the sheet id input so when i say sheet id input i mean this argument up here so the way you're going to use this function is you're going to pass in a sheet id the reason that i like to do this is because uh, google sheets and google apps script do not have a native get sheet by id function what it allows you to do is get the sheet by its name the problem with using the name is that if you give this workbook to someone else they might change the name of the, of the Google Sheets uh, tab that you're pulling data from. And if that happens, then this script is going to break. So the way to get around that is by referencing the sheet ID so that you have a solid foundation with which to develop. So what's going to happen is, is we are going to access the sheets variable that we created on line seven, and we're going to loop through each of them by evaluating their ID against the ID that we're looking to pull in. So the way that this logic is going to work is we're gonna use an if statement, and we're gonna say if sheets iterator dot get sheet ID is equal, sorry, we got a messed up parentheses there. Make sure you have two parentheses after sheet ID. If it's equal to sheet underscore ID in the same way that our input is set, then we will allow it to do something. And the thing that we're going to allow it to do is um, be called in a variable called sheet name. 
and we're gonna have that set to sheets iterator dot get sheet name. So this is gonna give us a dynamic way to identify what the sheet name is based upon the ID that we wanna pull in. So if the name does change, then it won't change anything. So now we can access the sheet in a stable manner and we are going to return wb dot get sheet by name and we are going to pass in the sheet name variable that is being determined based upon the sheet ID. If you want to learn more about this, I have a couple other videos. I use this method throughout my scripting. It's a personal preference of mine, and it's something that I recommend to everybody do. We're going to go back to our code file now. Uh, so I, I cleared out my boilerplate already. You can keep it if you want to. Uh, so you're going to want to have a function here. I'm going to call my main. You can call it, right now it might say my function. That's the boilerplate that you get with the code.js file. That's totally fine. These names are all relative. It doesn't really matter. We're going to do curly brackets. We're going to hit enter. And what we're going to do now is we're going to collect the charts from the sheet. So we're going to declare a variable called chart. And we're going to set it to, uh, we're going to use that get sheet by ID function that we just built. Um, you, you don't have to use get sheet by ID. You can use a variable in here if you want to and just take the code that we just wrote and keep building this out. I'd recommend using the get sheet by ID function. So the ID that you pass in here is going to be whatever your identification number is in your URL. If you're using sheet one, it's highly likely that it is going to be zero. Um, there are some circumstances where it might not be zero, but if you are using a Google Sheet within a Google Drive folder and you create a new workbook, it is going to be a zero for Sheet 1. But if, if it's not, so for example here, if I create Sheet 2, you would just grab this identification number up here. It's wherever your charts are that you want to put into an email. Go there. Grab the ID after GID equals sign. So because mine is zero, I'm going to pass in zero. Then I'm going to use the dot method and activate the get charts method. And then I'm going to have an empty parentheses there. So when you go into get charts, the documentation is going to show you how to use it. It's recommending that you loop through the charts. We're not going to do that. We're just going to statically reference it using um, the access point. So I'm going to do zero because I have only one chart at the moment. Uh, the way that App Script works is uh, it's zero indexed. So one is zero, two is one. Basically, instead of starting at one, it starts at zero. So the first value is going to be zero. We're going to do get as, and then we are going to return an image slash png file you can use any of these you can see that there's plenty of options i decided to do png because that's just what i use um, after we do that we are going to connect to the html template but before we can connect to the html template we actually need to have an html template so we're going to go up here and we're going to add a file and it's going to be an html file i like to just call it email it's not a good name frankly so you can call this whatever you want to, but just for sake of ease, I'm gonna use the word email up there. So now I'm gonna go back to my code file and I'm gonna declare a variable for email. You don't have to call it email. This has nothing to do with the HTML file that I just wrote right now. I'm just doing it for sake of ease. Frankly, it's probably better not to use email, but for the purposes of just this being a tutorial, you can roll with it. We're gonna do HTML service. We are going to create template from file. We're going to use a parentheses. We're going to do a single quote, and then we're going to use whatever the name of the HTML file is. So whatever comes before .html, that's what you enter here. The only reason that the word email is being used here is because that's the word that's being used here. This word is not connected to this word in any way, except for the fact that we're using an equal sign to define that they are connected. So if you call this something else and this, uh, like if this is one name and this is another name, you just put the one name here and another name here, and then this equal sign will join them together. Cool. So what we're going to do now is we are going to evaluate 
the HTML template. So I'm going to declare a variable called email content, and I'm going to have that set to email dot evaluate dot oh sorry sorry evaluate with parentheses dot con, um, get content with parentheses. You're good to go. You don't have to pass any arguments in there. Now what we can do is send the email. So we are going to use Gmail app and we're going to do send email. And now we're going to pass in uh, some values. So the first one is going to be the email that you want to send this to. So I'm going to use mapbridgety at dev, mapbridgety.dev at gmail.com. In the event that you have any questions about any of my videos, please use this email address and I will be sure to get back to you and try and help you as best I can. Next thing we're going to do is create a subject line. So this is whatever it says in your email. So you can see in my uh, first example, it was called your data charts. So we'll just use your data charts, comma, and then we are going to put um, what happens if the HTML doesn't, um, doesn't populate. So I'm going to say, please use Gmail. And then we are going to use uh, curly brackets to set the HTML body. Please notice that it's all lowercase except for B and body. And then we're going to use a semicolon and we're going to say email content. Then we're going to use a comma and we're going to hit enter. And we're going to write inline capital I images colon space. And then we're going to do a curly bracket again and we're going to type chart. So the reason that email content is going in the HTML body is because that's what's being evaluated. That's the content that's coming from the file in this email over here. So this variable is connecting to this file over here. This variable is getting the content of that file. And then this line of code here is what's pushing that when we send our email. The reason that chart is being used is because that's the name of the variable that contains the image of the chart that we want to put into our email. Cool. So we're going to save our project. I just realized that our script doesn't have a name. My apologies. We're going to call this email charts. You can call it whatever you want to. So if this is an actual project you're working on, give it a name so that you can remember what it is. Now we're going to go to our email file so that we can uh, write some HTML. So this is going to be really basic. We're, we're not designing anything here. We're just seeing what the code is to literally get an image into a, uh, an email. So we're going to begin with um, p tags. So we're going to have our opening p tag, which is just less than, p, greater than. And then we're going to do our closing p tag, which you see has a slash in there. So we're going to say, hello, here are our charts. You can say whatever you want to. Next, we're going to use an IMG tag, and then we're going to type source, SRC, is equal to, and then we're going to do single quotes, and we're going to say CID, and then chart. The reason that we're using chart is because that's the name of the variable in our code file. Then we're going to add in uh, the closing of that tag. We're going to hit save, we're going to cross our fingers, and we're going to hit run. We're going to have to give approval so that AppScript can read, write, and delete from our email. So we're going to click on advanced here, go to email charts, you know, all this type of stuff, hit allow. Hopefully we're going to get an email in a moment. Great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to delete that old email. I'm going to remove my security alert. And this is a good sign, right? I have an email from myself that says your data charts. Hello, here are your charts. And now we're getting a pie chart in there, which is great, right? This is exactly what's existing in our Google Sheet. So this is wonderful. But what might happen is you might have more than one chart on a sheet tab, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a pie chart, or sorry, not pie chart. We're going to create a column chart. So I'm just going to go over to chart here, and we're going to get another pie chart. And then I'm just going to go up here and really quickly change it to uh, a, um, a column chart, sorry. Uh, so we're going to go over here. Now, what ends up happening is you have zero, which is one. Now that we have two charts, I'm going to change this to the number one. I'm going to hit save. And when I run this, what I'm going to expect 
is that my script is going to go from showing me this pie chart to my new email is going to have the bar chart. And the reason for that is because this is one, which again, in a zero index is zero. And this was the second chart we created, which is one. So in the event that you want to have more than one chart in your, your script file, all you have to do is just copy paste it like this, change the name. This is the simplest way to do it. I'm not saying this is how you should do it, but like all you have to do is just create a new variable, change the zero to a one to represent the second chart that you've created on your page, go down to your inline images, change it to chart two, go to your HTML file, and then just for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna copy all of this. I'm gonna paste it. Instead of saying, hello, here are your charts, I'm gonna say, hello, here is your second chart. And I'm gonna change this chart ID here to chart two. I'm gonna hit save, cross my fingers, hit run. And now what we should see is an email that has two charts in it. The first being our pie, the second being our bar. Cool. So this is a basic lesson on how to collect charts from Google Sheets and send them via app script. Um, in the event that you want to send an automated message, all you have to do is just go to the, the triggers uh, tab and add in a, a time-driven trigger, and then you could do an hour, a day, a week, a month, whatever, and you can just start sending reports on a regular basis. Like I said, this will work for um, bar charts, pie charts, all the other charts, but if you wanted to use uh, a combo chart like these, I believe, that have more than one axis on them, it will not work. Please check out my channel for a follow-up video that will provide that solution. But in the meantime, please hit up the comments if there's anything I overlooked or if you have any questions. Uh, my email is uh, in my About section, and it's also in this code file in here. I love hearing from all of you. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.